Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good afternoon, everyone. It is Wednesday, July the 13th, 2022. It is currently 12.35 p.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from Abilene, Texas, where currently in the state of Texas, we are being told that, what, 26 million people in the state of Texas, we're being warned that we may experience blackouts. Yes, the power grid, the power demand here in Texas, the power demand in Texas here is crazy because I think today is supposed to be 106 degrees. The demand for power, the power grid is having problems. We've got a situation developing here in Texas where we could end up experiencing blackouts, and I'm not sure if you are aware of this. If I experience a blackout, well, I cannot be doing any live broadcasting, right? I can't I can't be doing any devotional messages, any Bible studies. I can't any news commentary, any theological discussions. It all comes to an end, and then my focus becomes it's 106 degrees outside. I have no power. That means I have no air conditioning. That means I'm going to die. So before that occurs, I'm not saying it will occur, but before that occurs, I thought I would turn on the microphone and bring everyone a special episode of the Bible study exercise. I know currently we are working on the doctrine of the Holy Spirit for the Bible study exercise. I know some of you are working hard on the topical method of Bible study on the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. So I know that there's a, we've already have a lot going on, but I just wanted to take a few minutes of your time today to bring you a special episode of the Bible study exercise where I just kind of give you a little kind of a small assignment, give you something to work on just in case I cannot record or do anything else today. I wanted to make sure that I try to provide some kind of spiritual nourishment and spiritual food today while I have an opportunity. So that's what we're going to do. But listen carefully. This episode is not going to have me doing any teaching. It's just going to be me presenting you kind of a small assignment to work on, to meditate on. And then whatever you discover or find, you can email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com to show me what you discovered, what you think, your interpretation, and whatever. So I'm just here to present you something to to work on, something to get, get you into the Word of God. I'm not here necessarily to present you teaching, and that's one of the things that makes the Bible Study Exercise podcast somewhat, or the podcast series, somewhat unique, is because in many cases I don't do the teaching. I just say, hey, work on this, look this, what do you think about this, so that I can move you from a passive listener to an active participant, someone active, actively studying God's Word, because we need more of that. So are you ready for today? The goal is this. I want you to observe when and for what purpose a New Testament passage includes an Old Testament quotation. The the exercise today is for you to observe when and for what purpose a New Testament passage includes an Old Testament quotation or I guess this is what I want you to do. I'm going to give you something to observe. I want you to observe a New Testament passage referencing an Old Testament passage. So I want you to observe that. So that means you're going to have to go look at the Old Testament passage and the New Testament passage. I want you to do the observation of that. Remember, Bible study is 90% observation. In fact, in some ways, it's really 100% observation. I think Bible study is all observation. Interpretation is something different, but we, we could we could have that discussion. So the first thing I want you to do is you're going, or the first thing you're going to do is you're going to spend some time observing an Old Testament passage and a New Testament passage, which references that Old Testament passage. Just observing. After you've done the observing, then I want you to determine what was the purpose of the New New Testament passage referencing that Old Testament passage. You're going to have to determine the purpose. You're going to observe, you're going to inter, then you're going to determine the purpose, and then you will try to interpret what the New Testament passage is trying to say in the use of that Old Testament passage. So you're going to observe, you're going to determine, 
and you're going to interpret. That's what you're going to do today if you, well, will participate in this exercise. Observation, determination, interpretation. You're going to observe an Old Testament passage and a New Testament passage, which makes reference to that Old Testament passage. You're going to try to determine why, what's the purpose of the New Testament referencing that New Testament passage, referencing that Old Testament passage. Then you're going to try to interpret what that New Testament passage is trying to say with its use of that Old Testament passage. You think think you're up for this? You think, all right, here's what you're going to do. First, you're going to go to 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18, and you're going to read these words. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal or Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. This is God's word to Elijah, all right? And he tells Elijah, it's very important. I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto, again, there's all kinds of dispute in how to pronounce this, Beal, Beal, I've even heard Baal, okay, Beal, or Beal, there's all kinds of different ways, all right, it's just crazy how many different, you, I saw a, uh, someone on YouTube took a video and they had like, uh, it was just one person after another saying this word and 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 everyone said it differently all right so i just i just find it interesting but okay yet i have left me 7000 in israel all the knees which have not bowed unto baal and every mouth which have not kissed him all right that's god's word to elijah first kings 19:18 all right, you guys, you're going to observe that. Now, what you'll need to do is back up and gather context. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some material to help you here for, for the first Kings passage, all right? So let me just go ahead and point you to that. If you are using our curriculum, log in today and for the uh, Explore the Bible curriculum, well, you'll know if you'll go to the Daily Discipleship Guide, today is all about this passage, First Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 18. It starts off with, understand the context. So it will give you the context, and then you can read all the context for yourself. And then if you you go down to like page 63 of the curriculum, you're going to see, observe when and for what purpose a New Testament passage includes an Old Testament quotation. They're the one who kind of came up with this idea, and I thought I would take it and do my own thing with it. They don't talk about observation, determination, and interpretation. That's mine but I want you to break it down that way. You're going to observe the Old Testament passage, which is 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18, all right? Okay, and then you're going to observe the New Testament passage, which I'm about to give you. Then you've got to determine why the New Testament passage is using it, and then you have to interpret that New Testament passage in light of, of, of how it's using that Old Testament passage of 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18. But just log into the curriculum today and you'll have access. If you say, I don't know how to get to the curriculum, email me, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. Say, I want the curriculum. I will send you a link. Just remember, if you sign up for the curriculum, you're taking a spot and we, we want you to have it. It's free. It costs us money. We want you to have it. We just want you to make sure you're using the curriculum, all right? So if you have access today, just log in and you can see all of this, all right? So here we go. Old Testament passage, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not, hath not kissed him. Now, when you go to the New Testament, the Apostle Paul makes reference to this. Are you ready? Romans chapter 11, verse 4. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not followed the knee to the image of Baal. Paul takes that he's making a reference now back to, to 1 Kings 19, 18, and he, it's, it, he uses that, that reference in this way, and I'm quoting again, but what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. What, how is he using it? What is he using it for? You got to determine the purpose, and then you have to interpret that Romans 11 section 
and in light of how he's using that passage in 1 Kings, or the curriculum states it this way. Paul quoted 1 Kings 19.18, God's words to Elijah in Romans 11.4. Review the Romans passage. Well, no, you need to observe both the Old Testament and the New Testament passage, okay? What they tell you to, uh, in your observation, what similarities and differences appear in the Old Testament and New Testament passage? All right, now, how does the first king passage help you better understand Jesus and the gospel? I don't like that question. You need to determine how is Paul using this? You've got to determine what, why is Paul grabbing a, that reference in first Kings 19? What is he doing here? What you try, you got to determine the reason. And then after you've determined that you step back and now you have to figure out how do I interpret this passage in, in Romans in light of the use of the passage in 1 Kings chapter 19, or of the, of the passage, 1 Kings 19, 18. All right, so observe 1 Kings 19, 18, Romans 11, 4. Deter, observe them. Just look carefully. Just look. Look look at each one. You may want to, you can observe the context of both. Know the context of both. So it's just observation, observation. Don't do any interpretation at this point. You just observe what's there. Observe the words that are used. If you bring an interpretation to your observation, you mess it all up. So you just do observation. What you can do is you can take a piece of paper and you can write 1 Kings 19, 18 and just write down your observations. Just just op, don't interpret anything. Then just write down Romans 11, 4. Just write down your observations. Don't interpret. Now you can see, okay, there. You may want to write down something about the context that you observe not an interpretation, right? And you can just write down which verses you're referencing in your to, to provide you context. But again, no interpretation. Now, once you've done that, then you go, okay, now, I have determined that Paul is using 1 Kings 19.18 for this reason. And then you just write down the reason you think Paul is using it. Obviously, he's doing so under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but what's the purpose in the writing and, and referencing it? Then, once you've done that, now you step back and you have to provide, provide a very short but succinct interpretation of Romans 11.4 based off, well, the use of 1 Kings 19.18. Like, you're going to interpret what, what Paul is trying to say here, what Paul is, Paul is using this to Get this point across. Here's his point. Here's the interpretation we need to try to arrive at. All right now, you may say, well, determination and interpretation, it's very similar. Oh, there, there's going to be some overlap. But just the determination, you're just going, oh, I think he's using this for this reason. And then your interpretation will just be a little bit more of, of drawing that out. The reason he used it was for this, and we, the interpretation we take from this is this. It may be very similar. I don't want you to get confused there, but I'm trying to break it down into three parts. Observation, determination, interpretation. So there is your assignment for today, for the Bible study exercise. I didn't want you to get, I didn't want you to go, wait a minute. There's been no podcast episodes today. What am I supposed to do? I'm going to spiritually starve. Okay, I know you wouldn't do that because you got a million other things to listen to, but I wanted to do my part to make sure you have some spiritual food to work on today. All right? 1 Kings 19.18. If I said 19.8, I apologize. 19.18 and Romans 11.4. Observe 1 Kings 19.18. Just when you just grab a piece of paper, 1 Kings 19, 18, just write down your observation. You can write down observations of the verses before and after if you need to. No interpretation. No interpretation. Write down Romans 11, 4. Do no, again, write down your observations, not interpretations. Just observe what is actually there, words that are actually used. Okay, then sit back and go, hmm, I've got to determine why I think Paul is borrowing from this passage why the Holy Spirit led Paul to borrow from this passage, however you want to, to, to uh, word that. Once you've determined that, then you go, okay, now, I've observed both. I've determined why I think Paul is using this. Now, how do I interpret Romans 11, 4 in light of the usage of 1 Kings 19, 18? All right, 
I, there's, I, I want to start teaching. I want to start. It's so hard to do this because I want to teach, but I, I can't. I, I'm just, well, I mean, I guess I could, but I don't want to. I want to leave it with you. All right. Now I'm going to stop right there. I apologize for trying to kind of rush through that. I hope I didn't rush through it too much, but I, I definitely don't want to lose power in the middle of this. So you can email me if you have any questions, right? You, uh, you, you, you need any help, just email me, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. That's newsif at yahoo.com. I will do everything in my power to assist you today and help you and uh, see if you we can, uh, well, gain, gain some understanding. Well, someone just said thank you. Well, thank you. That's, I greatly appreciate that. Hopefully, hopefully everything made sense. I think I was trying to rush a little bit, so hopefully... I gave right references. When I go back and listen, I always say, wait a minute. I said 1 Kings 19, 8. Why did I do? But I hope, I think I got the references right. 1 Kings 19, 18, Romans 11, 4, right? Observation, determination, interpretation. I think I broke it down into three parts. Um, also, I gave you where you can get the rest of the information from the, the, Bible, from the uh, Bible study curriculum. All you have to do is log in. You'll look uh, for the, in fact, I'll go back. You can uh, look for, hang on, let me log in. Let me log back into the curriculum just so that I can make sure you have all the correct information here. Watch, I'm going to take just a little long and then all of a sudden the power is going to go off here. All right, hang on. Just give me one second. I have to log in because it logged me out. All right, here we go. As soon as you log in, You're going to see Bible Studies for Life, Unit 1, Session 6, un- United Through the Spirit. That's still in with our study of the Doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Underneath that, Explore the Bible, Adult, Session 7, Hope. You click on that, and then you're going to see Personal Study Guides, Skip It. Personal Study Guides, Skip It. Leader Guides, Skip It. Leader Guides, Skip It. Daily Discipleship Guide. That is what I want you to go to. That's the one I want you to go to. All right? And then... You'll see immediately, understand the context, go down, and then on page 63, right side of the page, at the bottom, you'll see Bible skill. And I'm using that Bible skill and trying to give you an an exercise to continue to develop your Bible study skills. And you're using observation, determination, and interpretation. There we go. Is 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 everybody happy with that today? What, what are you doing? Good. Why, why are you still listening? Shouldn't you already have your notebook open, a pencil, and a Bible? I mean, get busy. <laughs> Email me, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. Everyone have a great day. God bless.